In the last video, I covered how to send a file using FLAMP, the amateur multicast protocol for ensuring error-free sending of files, such as the sample situation report regarding a wildfire, along with a request for delivery of heavy equipment. In this video, I'm going to cover relaying a FLAMP file that you've already received from another station. We use FLAMP quite a bit when sending Amron traffic, such as the weekly Amron Intelligence Brief. There are two ways to relay a FLAMP file. The first way is by relaying directly from the FLAMP application, retransmitting a file that you've received and which is still displayed in your receive window. This is a simple procedure. Identify the file you wish to relay, displayed in the bottom pane of your FLAMP receive window, click on it to highlight it and click the button labeled relay. The other way is by recalling a specific relay file from your relay files folder which you've received earlier in a previous FLAMP session. This allows you to keep the same queue that was generated by the original sender and I'll cover that exact step in a moment. But before we get into the how, it's important to understand the why. It used to be that you could relay a FLAMP file you've received so long as you kept your FLAMP application open and the file you received remains displayed in your receive pane. This allows you to relay the file keeping the same file queue. But if you closed FLAMP and reopen it in a new session, the original file could no longer be relayed but needed to be sent as a new transmission, generating a new queue. The developers of FLAMP since version 2.2.11 have added a unique and extremely helpful feature, and that is the ability to save and recall a file as a relay file, maintaining its original queue. For this video, you'll see versions 2.2.11 and 2.2.12 used. You can pause this video to note the settings for the FLAMP version you're using. Why is this helpful? Well, first of all, this helps to minimize receiving multiple copies of the exact same file with different queues. If the same file with the same queue number is being sent out and relayed, all receiving stations will receive one file. Secondly, for stations missing blocks, they're much more likely to get the block fills they need if there aren't multiple queues out there. For example, let's say a Missouri station operator just came in from a two-hour neighborhood patrol. He can't keep his station on all the time because he's trying to manage his solar battery backup power. He wasn't available during the last scheduled net. So he powers up his station and asks if anyone has the most recent situation report, SITREP or the latest Amron Intelligence Brief. A station in Colorado sees the request and offers to transmit the SIT rep he received from the net that ended an hour ago. The Colorado station begins sending the SIT rep to the Missouri station. Incidentally, there are two stations, one in Texas and one in Illinois, who have received partial copies of the same SIT rep and are missing blocks. They can benefit from this file transmission too. The Colorado station is using the relay feature, maintaining the original queue of 3H76 from the original sender. The Texas station, who is missing blocks, also received most of the file with the queue of 3H76. Unfortunately, the Illinois station received a partial copy of the exact same report, but sent by another station who didn't use the relay feature, and sent the file as a new file transfer, which generated an entirely new queue of 949L. So even though it's the same report, his missing blocks won't fill. In this case, Colorado has a good path to Missouri and Texas. So both receive a good 100% copy of the file with no missing blocks. Also, if there's a good path, between the Colorado and Illinois stations, he could also receive a full copy of the file with a new queue of 3H76. If he doesn't have a good path or for some reason ends up missing blocks, 
He'll then have two partial copies of the same file with missing blocks in two queues. If he is a transmitting station, he could request block fills from the Colorado station. And even the Missouri or Texas stations could send block fills to the Illinois station. This happens all the time on the Amron Persistent Presence Net. If the Illinois station is a receive-only station, such as a shortwave radio listener, he's at the mercy of someone out there, somewhere, sending the blocks again that he needs from either Q949L or 3H76. His best option would be to leave his radio on frequency and leave his FL Digi and FLAMP programs open so he can catch transmissions sent by other stations later. Now, from the Colorado station's perspective, let's show how you would relay a file. You notice a station from Missouri asking for the latest traffic. Missouri says he hasn't seen a SITREP since yesterday, and you have the latest SITREP that was sent out earlier today. Tell him you have today's SITREP and you can relay it to him. This back and forth dialogue will help you both confirm you have a good path. In FLAMP, click on the File menu button. From the drop down menu, select Load Relay Files. Then in the File directory, select the folder labeled Relay. Then select the file you want to relay. When a file is saved as a relay, you'll notice that the file name will begin with the QID that accompanied that file when you received it earlier. You may have received multiple copies of the same file with multiple different queues. This is handy when a station is asking for block fills for a specific QID. You can load that specific queue. Since you're relaying a file that you've received, when you load it, it will appear in your FLAMP receive window, not your transmit window. Files loaded into your transmit window will be sent as a brand new file and an entirely new queue will be assigned to it. Once the file is loaded, then you simply click on the relay button. When prompted to transmit, if the frequency is clear, click yes. And that's it. If he's missing blocks, the receiving station can click on his report button to report which blocks he's missing. You can then use the fetch button to automatically load the blocks he's missing and retransmit just those missing blocks. On a one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two radio session, the receiving station can click the report button to send a 100% confirmed report. But during a scheduled net, when the sending station is sending to the entire net, this is called wide distribution traffic, receiving stations missing blocks should be the only ones reporting. Stations with 100% copy should keep the frequency clear and avoid transmitting so stations missing blocks can report and transmit without interference. If you found this video helpful, then give it a like and share with others and subscribe. There's a lot more content on the way. Now, get your comms up.